All right, third time's the charm. I'm trying really hard to cram an awful lot into 10 minutes tonight, guys. But uh, anyway, this is Chrissy with another awesome tutorial for the Photography for Beginners editing group. Tonight's challenge came from Dana. She has three images of a newborn that she wants compos composited into a single image. If you're familiar with newborn photography, this is pretty standard. If newborn photography is something that you want to get into, um, these are skills that you're going to have to know inside and out if this is something that you want to do. So yeah, you can definitely composite these into one image just like this. Uh, this was my end result. <coughs> so if I go over here, let me just uh, show you. From the three images, there was one that was actually really great. Um, and for a beginner, I thought I was really impressed with this shot. All that needed to be done was to have this one little support, uh, some background distractions cloned out. Um, and that would have been my pick on that, but that wasn't what was asked, so let's get right to it. Uh, as you can see, the different elements that um, all had to come from the three images to make up the final image, base image, uh, the crown from another image, and I have one, one good arm, which I had to copy and flip over to make the other arm, and then a final cleaning layer. <coughs> basically just a blank layer on top of everything, um, a clone tool and make sure that sample all layers is selected and go around and uh, clone everything in. I am going to run out of time before I get that part of the tutorial, but cloning is a pretty basic tool and I, I can talk about it all day long, but until you actually do it and trial and error to figure out how you want to do it, basically it's just a matter of cloning the background the blanket out towards the sides so that I have a better crop ratio um, and then filling in anywhere where the images were joining. So that is uh, the result actually of about 45 minutes of editing. So I've got two min uh, eight minutes left. Let's hurry up and do this. I had to resize these images without you because I was running out of time. Uh, there was slight size differences and the only way to really do that is to um, import your base image first throw one down on top of it, lower the opacity on it a little bit so you can see through, and uh, make your adjustments in size. Always hold the shift button when you're um, enlarging or, or shrinking down an image so that you don't end up with, a, with it looking squished or anything. <coughs> but anyway, the first thing we want to do is put a crown on this adorable head. This is the image I decided to take the crown from. As you can see, I, uh, I've got it pretty much the size I wanted already, and I put it in position just by, uh, like I said, lowering the opacity so I could see through, lining up the top of the head there so that it works. Uh, apply a layer mask. I think you've probably all seen me do this before. And I'm just going to uh, paint black over everything within the hairline there so that I can see that beautiful face again. Uh, because remember, from the bottom image, it's the face that I wanted. From the top image, it's the crown that I want. So, And as much of the support hands as I can get rid of, uh, because they don't overlap, I'm, I'm going to be left with this little uh, space here where neither image was able to provide me with a background there. When you're photographing, you always want to make sure that you've got clean outside between all of the images that you've got. So that's an area I'm just going to have to clone in later. It's not a big deal. <coughs> so the crown was the really easy part. Um, and it's just a matter of, of taking out what I don't want. Now the next tricky bit was the hands. Um, the image where I've got the hands to pull from, only one of them is actually in a great position uh, to match the face shot that I wanted. This is where you want to aim for when you're doing the newborn photography and this was shot perfectly. This is exactly how you want to support that. Um, when you go to photograph the elbows so that you have something to composite in, you need to make sure that these hands don't move. Um, so you want to put a hand on the forehead to keep the weight off of those hands um, and get the shot quickly before the elbows have a chance to sort of slide out or the hands drop down because when you end up with uh, the hands drastically moving, it's really hard to get them to line up. So <clears throat> what I'm going to do is apply a layer mask here as well. And as I said, the trick for this for me was to just take the good arm, flip it over to the other side, and use that as well. 
So first thing I'm going to do is get rid of the bits of this image that I know I don't want just by painting black over them. And I just have to make sure to be careful around that hand that I want to keep. So let's bring back the adorable face, the ginormous lips, and I want to keep that shoulder I can get rid of everything beyond that and I can be sort of sloppy now and tidy that up after the fact. And I didn't really want that hand. I do want the blanket though. Let me just bring that blanket back in. Alright, so it looks pretty sloppy still but I'm going to go back and select this layer and I'm just going to take this last sew tool and I tend to select pretty wide when I'm doing things like this so that I have room and I'm not going to have to say oh why didn't I make that a little bit bigger and, and go back and do it again uh, so always uh, always aim big for these so control C to copy, control V to paste control T to get my transform box up right click and select flip horizontal I'm going to lower the opacity so that I can work on placing this. I want to place it right there. So I'm going to bring this over so it resembles the hand that was there when the arm was, when the, it was being supported in the first image. Alright, and uh, just the main thing I want to do here is make sure I'm not covering the lips with this at all. So if I look through, it might be a little close to the lips there, so I'm just going to nudge that over. To keep this from looking too mirrored, I'm just going to change the perspective on it just a bit there. There we go. And then uh, that way it's not a flawless mirrored image because those tend to stand out in photography I find. So bring the opacity back up, accept that, and you guessed it, time for another layer mask. Down to only having two minutes left. Let's see how much of this I can get in there. Uh, so make sure you're painting with black. We're going to reveal the good arm. Just uh, get rid of this. That's just image from below. We want to make sure that we're revealing all of the face. There we go. And I want to keep that uh, that arm over there. <coughs> and that literally in a nutshell is it. After that, oh, if you go too far, just click X to get back the white brush. There, I'll just get rid of that. So then from this point it was a matter of making that final layer of cloning. So make sure you go to the top of your image, create a new layer, clone tool on 100% and there's really no substitute for spending an hour filling in all of the little bits. It's, uh, it's time consuming and fiddly. Uh, for this area I did fill it all in shadow. Um, but then uh, with a very low opacity brush, I just sampled skin from the forehead and brushed it in to lighten that shadowed area up a bit. And I'll show you that here. As you can see, it was originally a darker shadow. Um, that's exactly the same as the image I was just working on. And then when I cloned up that shadow, it kind of left a big black area in the baby's chest. So it was just a matter of 20% uh, opacity clone tool and I just cloned skin from up there to, to fill that in and then it was just a matter of cloning everything else out when I was done grabbing my selection tool and cropping my image <coughs> so you make your selection crop and then just uh, going back in there was areas missed there Use my clone tool on that. Sample all layers again. Nice big brush. 30 seconds left. So I really want to thank everybody for watching this tutorial. I know that I, I kind of glossed over a lot of uh, a lot of the steps. I, I just wanted to show how it was possible to do, but in a 10 minute video, it just gets really tricky. Um, but I hope that you enjoyed the video. If you have suggestions for more, look forward to hearing from them. Thank you so much for joining me and have yourselves a great night. Thanks. Bye-bye.